Tonight, Artem suddenly decided to have a serious conversation with her and scheduled a meeting at a quiet and cozy cafe. The new year was approaching, and it seemed to her that something magical would happen to her during this festive time. She believed that in the new year, exactly what she had long dreamed of would come true. Perhaps even on the magical New Year's Eve, her friend Artem would finally gather the courage to propose to her. They had known each other for two years, and a week ago, she accidentally saw him coming out of a jewelry store. She even thought she saw him hide a small box in his pocket. There was no doubt in her mind that it was an engagement ring for her. And finally, the long-awaited conversation she had prepared for, the proposal, the offer of his heart and hand. Ira was ready to extend her finger for the ring when suddenly she heard his stuttering and incoherent speech. It would have been better if he hadn't done it right now, on the eve of the new year. The words he uttered were something she never expected to hear. Ira, I have been thinking for a long time, and I have finally decided to tell you that we are completely different and not meant for each other. We should break up. Ira couldn't understand how to respond to this sudden breakup. Artem continued to say something, but Ira stopped listening. When she regained her composure, the cafe's entrance door was already closed behind the young man. Ira cried for a long time, not understanding why he treated her like this. After all, everything was fine between them. What happened? How many times had she comforted her friends when they were dumped by guys? But she never expected it to happen to her. The girl walked through the New Year's city that sparkled with all the colors of the rainbow, buzzing with excitement and joy, anticipating the holiday. The beautiful Christmas tree majestically stood on the central square. Everywhere there were New Year's fairs, some attractions, contests, lotteries, ice slides, and a skating rink. Somewhere in the distance, the sounds of a barrel organ played. Ira caught herself thinking that her soul was moaning in a similar way, and she walked towards the music. Attention, attention. Guaranteed New Year's Lottery. The monkey on the shoulder of the gray-haired organ grinder approached. The monkey was dressed in a colorful jacket embroidered with gold ribbons and jingling bells. Girl, we will now predict your happiness for free, said the gray-haired organ grinder. No, thank you. I don't need it, Ira tried to free herself from him. She looked at the monkey, it seemed to be shivering from the cold. How could they torment the poor animal like this? She constantly wanted to grab the little monkey and run home to warm it up. Miss, it's absolutely free, insisted the organ grinder, resistantly offering his bag of monkeys. The monkey pulled out a small piece of paper with the number 13 written on it for Ira. Miss, you are lucky. This is a very rare number, he loudly read what was written on the paper. Make someone happy in the new year, and you will be happy yourself. Don't pass by someone else's misfortune. Ira thought as she walked away from the persistent organ grinder and tucked the note into the pocket of her down jacket. Who would make me happy? My ex-fiancé made me so happy today, leaving me right before the new year, she thought, quickly walking away from the square. There was no place for her in this festive celebration of life. Can an unhappy person make another unhappy person happy? Ira thought, trudging through the snowdrifts. In the morning, she overslept again because she couldn't fall asleep all night. She felt so disgusted and nauseous from her emotional suffering. Her phone rang, interrupting her thoughts. It was her boss calling. Irina Sergeevna, you're late again. I promised I would fire you if you're late one more time. Don't make me do it, he said, barely catching his breath. Without even catching her breath, she rushed to the boss's office. Hello, Igor Borisovic, she said, barely able to breathe. Where's the report? Greetings first, the director asked. I asked you to prepare everything, fix all the flaws, right after the New Year holidays, or even earlier, so I could have it on my desk. And here I realized that the report was left at home on my table. I'll be right back to bring it. It's not far, Ira said, already bursting to run after the report. But the boss stopped her and said, 
I'm leaving to rest for all the festive days. Make sure the report is on my desk by the 8th, without your forgetfulness. Sorry for being late, I understand, the girl sighed, lowering her eyes. Go find a more irresponsible employee. I haven't seen one worse than you, he said, or maybe it was just very offensive since she always took her work seriously. She worked on every report, and there were never any remarks. And as soon as she made one mistake, she became the worst employee. What kind of year-end was this? The boss left in half an hour, angry, without even saying goodbye to the team or congratulating them on the upcoming holidays. Ira anxiously looked out the window of her office at the street across. There was a grocery store there, and a dog tied to the staircase railing had been freezing for two hours. Nobody came to pick it up. At first, the dog anxiously paced, looking at people, apparently searching for its owner. But then, it seemed to resign itself to its fate. The workday was coming to an end, and there was the usual pre-New Year hustle and bustle as everyone hurried home. Ira calmly gathered her things, no one was waiting for her at home, or rather, no one was waiting for her anywhere. Her mood was at rock bottom. As she passed by the store, she saw the dog tied to the railing again. The girl asked the store guard, Sir, have you seen who left the dog here? No, of course not. With so many people around all day, how can you keep track of everything? Seems like the dog is sick. Its owners just left it here to avoid the hassle, tied it up so it wouldn't follow them. It will probably freeze by morning, the guard sighed. Help me untie the dog. I'll take it home. I'll put up posters around the neighborhood. Maybe the owner will be found, Ira said, tears welling up in her eyes. You're something. If the owner left the dog here, how can they find it and respond? But you're a lovely girl. The collar and leash are nice and expensive. That means there are owners, Irina tried to argue, maybe something happened to the owner. The guard helped her untie the dog, but it seemed weak and hung on Ira's arms. Please perform another good deed. Call a taxi for me, I will take her to the veterinary clinic. It seems that the dogs are doing very badly. The young doctor on duty at the clinic immediately recognized the shaggy patient. I know this dog. Where did you get her? Vyacheslav Vitalievich asked. Someone tied her to the store railing and left her to die in the freezing cold, Ira said through tears. The girl's eyes sparkled so much that the doctor couldn't help but admire her sincerity and kindness. My name is Slava, the veterinarian introduced himself shyly. Let's see how we can help her. Do you know that this dog is purebred and quite expensive? She was brought to me for examination about a month ago. Her owner passed away and her son inherited not only the apartment but also the dog along with the property. But the problem is that he didn't want the dog. When he found out that she is worth money, he wanted to sell her and brought her to the clinic for a consultation. During the examination, we found out that the dog has a benign tumor. If we operate on her, she will live longer and bring joy to her owners. But the new owner didn't want to deal with her treatment. He'd rather get rid of the sick animal than spend money on her. However, she can still be helped. I will treat her. I have the money. I earn well, so don't worry. When can we schedule the surgery? Irina rambled on, wiping the tears from her face. I don't have anyone else to spend it on anyway, the girl sadly smiled. Vyacheslav provided the dog with all the necessary care at that moment. It was midnight, and they scheduled the surgery for after the holidays. The dog would have to stay at the clinic under my supervision. You can visit her every day if you want, he said, taking Irina's hand. And then, until the morning, they couldn't stop talking. At the end of the shift, the young doctor suggested, let's celebrate New Year and Christmas together. And all the subsequent holidays for the rest of our lives. Yes, let's do that. The girl replied, putting on her down jacket. She put her hand in her pocket and pulled out a piece of paper with the number 13 written on it. Make someone happy on New Year's, and you will be happy yourself.
don't pass by someone else's misfortune. The message on it said. Another New Year miracle happened in the midst of the big city. Two people found each other, and their compassion for an suffering animal helped make it happen. How did these stories develop? If this is your first time here and you want to hear some brand new stories that will make you smart and knowledgeable, make sure to subscribe and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any updates, they saw what made them speechless, and the wolf came out of the woods with the boy. Do you have pets at home? It is well known that owning a cat or dog has a positive effect on our mood and well-being, especially important if we have a child in our family, when they grow up in the company of another friend, he learns patience and thoughtfulness, he learns friendship, what is it? Such dogs or kittens mean a lot to their children and in today's video we will see a very different pet. We will tell you an amazing story. Parents bought a little boy a dog. The baby fell in love with his new friend from the very beginning. His parents didn't seem to notice what happened between them, nor did they notice the ticking time bomb. Later, when the dog grew up, something happened here that shocked the whole town and the local community, the family lived in a village in Holland that was quite high up in the hills near the forest. The family lived on the compound, his father a hunter and his mother working part-time on a local farm. The couple have a 12-year-old son, Julian who loves animals and often visits his neighbors to play with their dogs. He likes to take them for walks, which he does every time he gets home from school. His neighbors are pretty old, so they really appreciate him because they don't have the energy to spend with their pets. Julian is so positive, you can probably guess that his yearly dream is to have a pet of his own, and he asks his parents to buy him a puppy for various birthday celebrations or holidays. Unfortunately, both Julian's parents were adamant and came up with more excuses to oppose the offer to buy or adopt a puppy. But one day the family is visited by Uncle Juliano Lars, who is also the boy's godfather. This man knows very well the dreams of small children, which is why he gave him a grey puppy as a gift despite the objections of his parents, who were furious that his uncle had gone against their wishes, but he spent hours to explain to them that it is important for a child to have his own dog. After lengthy negotiations, the couple agreed to keep the quadruped, but they regretted it a few months later, and we can actually guess why, as Julian and the puppy named Gate were basically inseparable. The boy spends all his free time with his new friend and he always plays with it. He enjoyed cleaning up his poo at certain times and going for regular walks with him, and as the weeks and months passed, Julian's parents admitted that their son was indeed perfect for taking care of his pup. On one day the dog fell down and appeared to be sick, the parents and Julian took him to the vet, luckily, after a checkup there was nothing wrong with him, but the vet said something that worried the family and the report turned out to be the dog isn't a dog, it appears to be a wolf, and it doesn't appear to be a purebred wild wolf from the woods, there must have been a domestic dog in its lineage. So in this case these inquiries usually it's a routine to procedure, they don't have to report. The Situation to the Police while Gat isn't exactly a dog, he basically acts like a normal collie so he won't be caught in court when he's due next week, and the wolf and Julian continue their peaceful, happy lives together. One day the parents announced that they were celebrating their 13th wedding anniversary this coming Saturday and they wanted to have a small party at home with some guests but the mother suggested that the wolf should be locked in the barn at that time and they asked it not scare the guests. The news came as a surprise to Julian, who was also one of their family members after all. The boy shouted, anyway, Ada man had fixed a time for the party and it would be locked. Julian's father took the wolf cub to the barn and locked him against the wall, and although there was nothing there, he was safe. This animal is noisy because it wants to join everyone in the party late at night. As the guests began to slowly leave the premises, the parents noticed that their son was missing. Everyone thought he had been sleeping at home, but when they opened the door to the room, they saw no one, and their first thought was that he might be playing in the barn with his pals, but when they entered the barn, the wolf was peacefully sleeping, there was no sign of the child, and he started calling to him, and they basically searched the entire house, with no news or response from Julian. The coyotes have joined in the search for his work, and it will be terrible if Julian does go to the forest alone at night. Everyone was worried about him, he might have lost his way there. He probably wanted to play there at first, 
but when he wanted to go home he got lost, not only his parents and friends, but basically the whole village started looking for the boy, even the old people of the village also walked around the forest looking for Julian. Hours later, one of the volunteers found a piece of clothing the boy had worn that day, next to footprints leading into the dark forest. They should be able to guess what kind of tragic accident a young boy can have going to such a place at night, no one can find the boy in the dark, they conduct such a pointless search in the dark, everyone agrees the rescue operation was extended and by the next morning friends were terrified when they saw the wild animal. They just want to find the little boy who disappeared in the forest. But to their surprise, he smelled pieces of Julian's clothes, which had Julian scent on them. So it moved forward immediately, and people rushed to it, but no one could catch up with the young predator. The wolves disappeared, the search party walked for hours through the dense woods, the sun was setting, and everyone was exhausted and wanted to give up. They decided to go home and rest for a while. The wolf ran to a nearby place. It found the little boy unconscious. The poor boy's legs fell into the bear's trap. The wolf sits quietly next to Julian and keeps an eye on his surroundings, local residents analyzed the footprints on the ground, and they also found it there. Meanwhile on the other side the wolf found Julian and took him home alone. The boy was then taken to hospital immediately. He awoke the next day and told the story of his miraculous survival. It turned out that he entered the forest, he just got lost. Suddenly he felt a pain in his ankle as he accidentally stepped on a trap, and he lost consciousness. The wolf found him and managed to take him straight from the bush to their home, and if it weren't for this clever animal, the boy would have stayed in that trap and probably died. Such is the friendship between the boy and this wild predator. His parents never spoke ill of the wolf again, and he had become a sensation and a true hero to the whole town. He proved by his actions that he was a faithful friend and that people could trust him. It's a shame Julian's parents had to discover this in such a painful way.